So Obama is talking about all of this with the global warming and that. And a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? It's a hoax. Since 79, half of the Arctic sea ice has disappeared. And just this year, four and a half million square miles melted away, an area the size of the US and Mexico combined. The rest of America stand up. We love our military and we love our country, but we hate Trump. but like we're not gonna be back for a long time. We have time. so much adventure ahead of us. We uh, got some showers in this morning. We are about to finish tying up the muffler on the van. Make sure the duct tape is secured. And we're gonna get this day started. Can you believe it? Neither Jordan or myself have ever been to Niagara Falls, and yet we both live in New York State. It's a little out of the way, but we have to swing by. Niagara Falls is truly breathtaking. We paid $10 and we got overnight parking, which is pretty dope. The guy's like, yeah, you guys can stay to like 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. So we're kind of just setting up camp right here, like kind of in the middle of the city. We're trying to make this cheap and affordable so we can still get all the way around the country. So this would, this will be show you what's going on. In the van here, we got this camp stove. We're cooking up some soup that we brought from home. Just some split pea soup out the back of the minivan in Cleveland, Ohio. So. Day in the life. <laughs> I never would have imagined that. 21 we can sit in the back of the van in a city we've never <laughs> been to eating we've soup out in Ohio eating split pea soup out the back of the game changer though like we are gonna always remember the day we eat soup out of the back of the van. Okay, hey my name's Bob, I'm the unknown street cop. What do you call a nun in a wheelchair? No idea. Virgin Mobile. <laughs> or holy roller. <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt, 26th President of the United States and lover of the great outdoors, came to the North Dakota Badlands in September of 1883 to hunt buffalo. By the end of his 15-day hunting trip, he had entered the cattle business and purchased a ranch. Mr. Roosevelt once stated, I have always said I would not have been President 
had it not been for my experience in North Dakota. In the Badlands, we got to meet two very different types of people. There are those who enjoy bonding over commonalities and sharing stories together, and there are others who simply do not give a crap. I have to think quietly because we're getting kicked out. We're camping here, and um, supposedly the landowners came, and they're trying to charge us with this fine young gentleman, one from Germany and one from Alaska, in a camper here, and they're like, you guys have to leave. And those guys are like, no, call the cops because we're not leaving out of here. We know you own the land, and there's no posted sign, so... If there would be a sign to say no trespassing, private property, then I would apologize to him or I would give him the 20 bucks. Yeah. You know, and he waits until the dark to come by here because most people give him the 20 dollars. We found a much better place to camp that night. Buffalo right now, but we're gonna say hi to the family we camped next to last night. So hopefully they'll say hi. This is them right here. Hi! Hey guys! See right there, they're all in their camper. We're heading back to Iowa. <laughs> you did? Yeah. You guys are going to Yeah. Gotta go this way. Gotta go that way. All right, man. All right. Take care. Enjoy the scenery. We'll see you guys. About the journey. Woo! Those are some awesome people right there. Yeah, they are. Find that, dude. Found a piece of buffalo fur. I'll take this home. Stuff a pillow with that, right? Oh yeah. This is soft. How's it feel, dude? Dude, I wonder if buffaloes would make good cuddle buddies. Uh, there's your answer. <laughs> There's nothing quite like hiking up into the snow at the end of June. Planet Earth is a truly stunning location, especially when you get to witness it from above. To me, it seems rather naive that we are postponing the urgency of protecting our environment and that we can convincingly justify the mitigation of climate change in order to profit from short-term economic benefits. One day when we were driving through Oakland, we got stopped by a homeless man who was asking us for money, 
and our first response was, go get a job. But then we started questioning. Is everyone born with the same opportunity? Do we really truly all have the same opportunity when we're born? Why is it that some people have to worry about whether or not they get to eat that day? I mean, who decides that? And others have to worry about whether or not they're going to make it onto the Ferris wheel, or if they have to wait another 10 minutes to get the next line. And yet both of them are justifiable concerns. Your life is even dinner. Properly trying to score a night of some free dinner. 